guys, welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to make a very basic apple vinegar and I'm going to show you how to make your own apple peptin. Yes, guys, you heard me correctly, apple peptin. You can buy this in a store, but it is rather expensive and you can buy this in the stores in the shape of a powder as well. However, guys, nothing better that is homemade. At least you know exactly what's in it. So if you watched my previous video, guys, I'll put the link up there, where me and Mr. Daniel processed 50 kilos of apple to produce 10 liters of fresh apple juice. Of course, guys, I'm going to be using my juice to make cider, but at the same time, we also end up with a lot of the apple mash. And of course, guys, being a prepper and trying to be as much self-sufficient as possible, I really hate to see that amount of apples go to waste or apple mash go to waste. So it's perfect, perfect opportunity, guys, for me to share these recipes with you. Just to let you know, I've been doing my own apple vinegar, apple cider vinegar for a very, very long time. Uh, and it's very, very easy and could be really cost effective if especially you're using the leftover apples, apple cores and apple skins. So guys, without further ado, let's proceed with the apple vinegar first. So one thing to mention guys, okay, there is a distinct difference between apple cider vinegar and apple vinegar. Apple cider vinegar, it's exactly what it sounds like. You initially make yourself apple cider from the 100% apple juice, you let it ferment into obviously the alcohol and then you let the bacteria to take over and it will become vinegar over time. Where apple vinegar guys, rather than making apple cider, we are going to be pretty much using just apples and water and we'll let the natural yeast take over and create apple vinegar. They both have pretty much the same nutritional profile, however the acidity will be totally different and taste will be different as well. So, without further ado guys, I will show you how super simple it is to make your apple vinegar. I have done a whole video on the, this kind of subject, this is why I'm just covering this briefly as I do have a lot of apple uh, mash here. So, right, this is only one of the buckets of the apples which we pressed yesterday. So you can see here guys, uh, they've been obviously juiced so, and they've been crushed through the crusher. So they have oxidized, but this is natural. The natural organic apples oxidize really, really quickly. So I've got here a jar, okay? And as I said to you guys, you can use your apple peels and apple cores if that's what you have. Like I know some people put the stuff in the freezer and then you collect enough and you can do it. The whole fact is you don't really need that much, but the more you have, the more richer of an apple flavor you'll get from your apple vinegar. So here we go. I've got a big two litre jar, okay, I'm going to put my apples in there, fresh apples, none of this nasties on the skins or anything like that, get out. So guys, here we are, just to, um, if anybody is wondering, yes, the apple's been washed um, under the hose outside before we actually press them and juice them so they have been rinsed. Um, next thing guys, it's really really straightforward, we're just going to add some water and then we're going to cover those apples. Again guys, you choose the container, okay, that fits the amount of apples or apple waste that you have. Okay, so I'm going to fill this up. This is a tap water, okay, in the bottle just to make it easy. I rotate my water prep stock. There we go. Right, so apples are covered. And it's really, honestly, super simple. Next thing, I've got um, a little cloth, okay, and I'm just gonna put this over the top to stop the fruit flies and let it breathe, breathe. Okay, and I'm just gonna do that. And guys, just put this in the warm place. Because these apples are organic apples, I don't have to worry about this. And of course, they have a natural yeast already on the apples. And this is what will start fermenting our apples. And these guys could not be any more natural, especially if you do grow your own. Uh, I know you can add on your yeast to start fermenting this, but guys, keep it as more natural as possible, especially if you're making this kind of thing to add on to your salads. That kind of apple vinegar, it won't be strong enough to do any sort of food preservations, but it'll be tasty enough to be able to add to your salad dressings. So all I'm going to do, guys, all right, you let it sit for couple of weeks, okay, you will see the apples started to foam and rise to the top. When the stage is um, starting to happen, you notice this foaming up at the top, guys. Strain them, okay, strain them through, get rid of all the apple, apple pieces, put this in a new sterilized jar, 
and I put your um, little muslin cloth on the top again I let it sit for as long as it takes um, it does take quite a while to get to the vinegary stage we're talking about months so you will soon know guys you will soon know that uh, when the vinegar bacteria takes over you'll start noticing the vinegary smell rather than the initially which will be like an alcohol cider smell so once you know you're at that stage you can then bottle it up do keep an eye on it because even after you think it's gone to the stage of being a vinegar it could still ferment and it could explode so once in a while depending which jar you're going to keep it on keep coming back to this and keep sort of burping this make sure there's no um, carbon dioxide left in there and then once you know it's gone totally flat to vinegar then you can package this for a long-term storage and keep it to whatever you guys want it to be so next thing guys let's talk about the apple peptin okay so you're probably aware guys if you do make your own jams and jellies that peptin is very very important majority of the fruits that you have or berries that you have will have some peptin but some have more than others and quite often especially if you're making a jellies rather than sort of the full berry preserves uh, you do require extra peptin and as I said earlier guys it is pretty pretty expensive I picked up from Tesco's quite a while back a little bottle of apple peptin and we're talking about 200 milliliters and it was like four pounds something so you can see it's not particularly that cheap at all Another thing guys you might be aware or might not be aware that the apple peptin has been actually given to children after the Chernobyl disaster. Apparently it shares quite a good quality with the um, charcoal, the activated charcoal. So once it's ingested it apparently had the ability to draw the, some radioactive particles and that's making the body pass them quicker. So that is kind of a very interesting fact and as a prepper this is certainly something that I would want to have in my prepper pantry. So guys, without further ado, let's make some apple peptin. So I'm going to be doing this in probably a couple of stages, but to you guys, I'm going to be filming just what it is, just for the ease of things. So first thing we need is obviously our apple mash, and I'm going to get a saucepan. So get yourself a saucepan as big as you can possibly get. It is similar to making some jelly, because at the end of the day, guys, all of this stuff is going to be um, boiled out of our apple mash, and we're going to be keeping that really clear liquid and then we're going to be processing this again and then processing it once more time to be able to get to a true apple peptin. So put some apples in the saucepan. I was wondering whether I should use my big uh, canner, the pressure canner, but because it is aluminium and it does get oxidized and with acid I didn't really feel like I want to be doing that with the acidic apples right so okay that's probably what we'll do so fill the pan up look something like that I'm gonna add on water make sure guys you add on water to cover the apples okay if you're doing this in the pieces the apples will float so you'll need a little bit less water but in our instance because they're already mushed So pretty much covered, so let's put it on the stove. So here we are guys, look, so the apples are pretty much covered with water, okay, and we're gonna bring them to the boil, and we're gonna boil them for approximately one hour. Just to bring this to your attention guys, again, the most peptin is actually in the skin and in the core of the apples. Yes, flesh also has some peptin, but the most is in the core and the skin. So if you do only collect yourself um, peel apple skins if you peel this for your children and keep the cores if you you know if you cook a lot with apples then it's it's very very good because they're the ones that have the majority of so as I said guys we put this on now and I'm going to bring this to boil okay once it's boiled I'm going to turn it to simmer and we're going to simmer this for about an hour here we are guys it's now boiling so now we're going to be adding on approximately four tablespoons of lemon juice this is actually to help us to extract peptin from the apples you can really do this before you start it but i've just done this i don't know all we do this after is boiling and as you can see i've got the second pot there with another batch of it so i'm going to add on a bit of the lemon there as well and we're going to let it simmer for an hour so guys here we are look it's now finished you can see the apples are all cooked down and the liquid now became a little bit somewhat uh, gelatinous which is exactly what we're looking for 
So next thing is, guys, this is going to be a slightly time-consuming thing, so I'm going to be leaving this overnight just undercover. But all we're going to do, guys, is to pick up a um, sort of container, depending on the volume of your Apple stuff you're trying to make. I've got the um, a sieve, okay, and I've put an extra bit of um, a muslin cloth inside it just to make it a little bit more finer. And the idea is, okay, we're going to pull this in, and it's a little bit messy, okay, a little bit at the time. It doesn't matter if some of it escapes through, it's not the end of the world. Doing this for the camera is a teeny weeny bit awkward. But the idea is, guys, you're going to let it dribble through, okay. It's going to take a while. I suggest you do not force that with um, a spatula, you just let this do this naturally exactly the same way like you would do with a jelly. You can start pushing it through, um, it will create a bit more haze, it's just not going to be particularly that um, aesthetically good looking nonetheless. So my point is guys, um, let it be, keep taking this out after it's finished, okay, and continue with the whole lot. So I'm going to be doing this over the next few hours, it's pointless me guys filming this, but you absolutely get the idea, okay? In the end, you should end up with still slightly cloudy, but a very nice color liquid. So when it's all done, guys, I'll see you then. So guys, here we are. It is now all strained. You can see here, look, it is quite a gloopy consistency. It is pretty much consistency of a jelly just before it kind of goes off. Next thing we're gonna do, guys, we're just gonna put the hob on. Okay, and we're going to simmer this. It's between an hour and a two hours, guys, until it's reduced in size by half. So, guys, now you can see it has reduced in size quite a lot. There is quite a bit of the scammy bits on the top. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to strain that, and I shall see you in a second. So, guys, here we are. Mission accomplished. So, I've strained that through just to get rid of all the nasty bits that were floating about on the top. And this is literally as simple as that. You'll know, guys, when it's done, because obviously the viscosity of that changed, you, it pretty much acts like you would be a bipeptin that you guys buy from the supermarket. If you do want to test it out, put a small little dish in a fridge, leave it there for a little bit, and you pretty much do like the same test you do with the jam, but the peptin should set just that little bit harder. So there's the two options, guys, too, in terms of how you're gonna store this or how you're able to store that. You can either put this in a um, little ice cubes and you can freeze that and then you take it out as and when you need them. Or alternatively, guys, you can put them in a jar. Either keep this in the fridge for a week or so, or alternatively, guys, you can process that in a uh, water bath canner for approximately 10 to 15 minutes. So I just want to put this in here, guys. I'm going to keep this in the fridge um, because I will be using that very soon. I just wanted to show you the um, a beautiful, beautiful color that you get with it. There we go. Didn't even need that one. So look at that guys. This is absolutely beautiful and absolutely amazing. And whatever the rest I have guys, I will put in the ice cube trays and then I'll freeze that. So literally was this was as simple as that. This is yes it was a little bit time consuming. Yes involved obviously dripping this overnight but what an achievement something that we some other thing that we don't have to um, buy in the supermarket and we know is 100 percent natural one thing maybe the question pops into your head are you actually able to dehydrate that so far guys from the research i've done no you can't really dehydrate it it does require a certain temperature to be able for it to um withhold its properties so at the moment as it stands i'll say no best thing guys if you do want it to be shelf stable just can it, water bath can it, and it's happy days. So anyway, guys, well, hopefully you enjoy my um, zero waste recipe. Uh, please don't forget to thumbs up, really helps the channel. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't, and I shall see you on the next video. Bye-bye.